I am Taylor, 46 years old, a homemaker. It has been around 23 years since I got married to my husband. Aaron, my son, Ella, has come of age. My family house was not far from my parents' houses, so I could see them frequently. My mother passed away five years ago, leaving my father. But I did not worry about him because he lived with my big brother's family. My big brother. Zane and his wife. Alina did not have a child. It had been a long time since my parents lived in a house with them. They seemed to have no troubles and got along well. However, their peaceful relations did not last long after my mother's death. My dad's dementia started one year ago, actually when he had retired from his job at the age of 70. I became worried about him because he had been a workaholic. The loss of my mother could be the cause of his dementia. According to Zane, the signs gradually appeared on him and Zane had taken him to see the doctor. Then he was diagnosed with dementia. I was worried about my father and asked Zane about his conditions. Aline has taken care of them. Everything's gonna be all right. I don't worry, said Zane. I was just relieved, but there was still a doubt I could not be clear. That was my big brother and his wife were not kind to my parents, but also their relatives, including me. When I went to their house, I saw one of their neighbors and heard that Elena spoke badly about my parents. The neighbors had known about my parents longer than her, so no matter what she said, they would not listen. However, the young neighbors were different. They believed her talks. And also, I heard that she talked about me. Thanks, Bathamers. Taylor is just all talk and never helped me, even though they're her own parents, she told the neighbors. One of their neighbors worried that Elena talked about my family behind her back, so let me know that. But I had to accept it if she really felt that way, because I did not live with them. I often went to see them, but it was not every day. After my father received a diagnosis of dementia, I started to visit their house whenever he had time. In the beginning, Elena did not care about me and just accepted my visit. In the beginning, Elena did not care about me and just accepted my visit. But, but something gradually emerged on her mind. Why do you come so often to our house and touch everything? Go back to your house and do your work. You're annoying. One day she said to me, I felt that getting along with my brother's wife was difficult. I wondered if she disliked it so much when someone interrupted her way. Like since that day, I did not visit their house as often as I used to. If something happened to my father, I thought they would call me. I decided to visit their house once a week. Plex, I made a phone call to my father to know his condition. I did not do any other things, and I never imagined it would cause the worst thing. One day, I called my father. He was the same as usual and looked with no problems. But I noticed that the tone of his voice was indicating he was not fine. Dan, are you okay? You seem a little down, I asked. He sighed gladly after one moment. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm one as we'll see heavy snowfall this year. Yeah, I the tile doubt. Our region had heavy snowfall every winter. Seniors struggled to remove the snow. It was even difficult for them to get outside. 
accepts and be curious and even though the neighbors, especially younger people, help the elderly people to remove the snow, a few of them died while they toiled to shovel the snow. That happened every year. Looking at the outside of the window, snow started falling. But if so, Zane will remove the snow. You don't need to worry. Dad. I had thought he was worrying about the removal of snow, but he was not satisfied with my reply. I asked him again what he was concerned about. Taylor, my room is cold. You can turn on the heater. Uh, she scolds me when I turn it on. She said not to use the heater because the price of uh, electricity is soaring. I was shocked. Actually, as Elena said, everything was getting so expensive these days, and it made us struggle to beat the rising cost of living. But it did not mean to not use old heating appliances in the house. A trill seer in a snowy region, it was such a cool thing, especially for elderly people. I just kinda thought. I just thought Zane and Elena did not know how cold their house was during the day because they were out for work. No, that was impossible. Zane was grown in this region and he had experienced severe winters. I hung up the phone and next. I called Zane. Hey, I have to hang up. I'm working. I'm working. I could guess he hid from his colleagues and whispered it. Sorry, but I need your help. I talked to Dad just a minute ago. He said he cannot heat up the room. I said, he gave a T.S. Keys case and answered with reluctance. And said, he's okay with it. Said it not your business. You know, Alina is feeling down because you're too noisy. Sorry. I felt his irritation through the phone. I could not continue the conversation, and he hung up the phone. I could not make up my mind. When he looked out the window, the snow was falling harder than minutes ago. Although I thought I would go to see my father, it was almost 4 p.m. It was around the time when Elena went back home. I worried about my father, but at the same time, I did not want to get any more troubles with her. I quit visiting their house. A few days later, the snow piled up. The world was covered with snow. If a house could not get in and out many times, it would be covered with a massive amount of snow in the evening. Of course, a car would be completely covered in snow. In the morning of that day, I cooperated with my neighbors and removed the snow to keep people off the road and use the sidewalk. If for the roads, the snowblower came to clear the snow. Shoveling snow was excellent exercise, and I could have confidence in my physical strength for the work. It was actually hard, but also was a good opportunity to interact with the neighbors. By the way, Taylor, I saw your father the other day. He was standing in front of his house in the evening. One of the neighbors said to me with worries while the people were lively to remove the snow. She worked as a nurse with eight-hour shifts. And that day, she had come back home around 1 a.m. and saw my father. I could not believe it and immediately thought over various things. I thought my father might start wandering, but I had not heard it from my brother. He looked like he was wearing pajamas. His clothes were clearly too light. He'll get a cold or even worse. He'll be in danger of his life. She said with her bitter smile. It looked like she was put off by that. Thank you for um, letting me know. I'll talk to my brother.
Um... I was not sure what situation my father had, so I could not continue the conversation. Removing the snow was almost done. After I confirmed everyone entered his house, I called my brother, but he did not answer, and I called his wife. Hello? Answered Elena. Hello, do you have time to talk now? Tell me quickly. I'm busy. It was obvious that her voice did not sound good, and I was bothering her. I just heard from my neighbor that dad was outside of the house at night. Then, well, we were worrying about that. He sometimes left our house in the evening. In the beginning, it looked like she did not get what I was talking about. She answered it as if she suddenly remembered. But the tone of her voice returned to something like, it was a hassle to deal with me. Is he alright? Is he alright? Of course. I never thought she just left him, but I was so worried about my father. Therefore, I asked it. However, it made her angry. She said some things loudly, and she hung up the phone. It was too loud, and I did not hear clearly what she said. But I thought my father was fine so far, so I did not call her anymore. Also, I did not go to see my father. Then, I was getting worried about my brother and his wife. If my father was wandering around at night, they might not get enough sleep. My father had to live in a nursing facility. Arya's thoughts came to my mind. I decided to talk to my husband this evening. I see, as you said, depending on your brother might not be good. Aaron agreed about the nursing facility when I talked to him. It was possible that I would take care of my father. In that case, I would quit my part-time job if my father was wandering around. I would feel more relieved if my father could stay in a safe place all day. The nursing home costs could be split by me and my brother. I think so. If I talk to Zane... I'll talk to Zane. After listening to my husband's opinion, the conversation about my father was finished, and I decided I would talk to my brother later. At this night, an unexpected thing happened. It was around 2 a.m. The town was in complete silence. My husband and I were sleeping well. It was still snowing outside. There was snow on the ground accumulating at ankle height. I was sleeping under a comforter to shut out the cold air, but I noticed something sounded far away. I woke up. I was focusing on the sound with sleepy eyes. It was the intercom. The watch showed it was over 2 a.m. I just had my hand outside of my comforter. The air was too cold. It, it was unusual that someone visited my house at this time. I felt fear and shook my husband, who was sleeping next to me, to wake him up. Ring that, the intercom still continued ringing. Hey, someone is there. I saw Aaron's eyes open slightly, so I whispered to him. He also noticed the danger might be coming to us, and his eyes were widened. He got up and was checking that the sound was surely coming from the intercom. Who is that? Don't move. Stay here. I'll check. He got out of the bed and wore a warm and snuggly robe. He left the room. He had said so, but I brought my cell phone and headed to the entrance together with him. He entered the living room to check the indoor monitor of the intercom. I became scared of the shadow of a person standing outside of the door. It's Dad. 
I was trembling with fear, but Aaron's voice came from the living room. I rushed over to the living room to check the monitor. I strained my eyes trying to see the person's silhouette on the screen. It was certainly my father. Oh my god! Turn on the heater right now. I said to Aaron to warm the room and ran up to the entrance. I opened the door. I found my father curled up in a ball because of the cold. Dad, what are you doing? Come inside. I put my gown on my father and suggested he come into the house. He followed it. His walk was clumsy and sat down inside of the entrance. Hey, Aaron. Help me. I could not lift my father sitting in the entrance, so I called Aaron. He rushed over to our place and brought my father to the living room. Noah also woke up by our noises. He came from the stairs while he rubbed his drowsy eyes. Noah, I need your help too. I said to him, he saw Aaron and my father. He looked to understand what was happening now. He quickly went back to his room and brought a blanket and comforter. Have a seat, Dan. As Aaron set a chair in front of the fireplace and suggested my father sit on it. My father followed it. When I looked at my father under the light, I noticed his pajama was wet because of the snow and he looked pale. His lips had turned blue, as I thought his life was in danger. I felt a tremor of dread. Hey, bring a hot towel. I think there's a big bucket. Put the hot water in it and bring it here. My father had walked barefoot, and not only his toes but also the whole foot had turned blue. I was stunned, and Aaron gave clear instructions. Noah followed his instructions. Oh no, Dad. What happened? I asked my father. His body was shaking. It seemed that it was hard to speak because his lips twitched. I immediately made a phone call to my brother. But his wife answered, not my brother. Hello? What time do you think it is? It seemed that she just woke up and said hoarsely, My dad, he's sleeping. Don't call me at midnight. I started to speak about my father, but she shouted and interrupted me. I was irritated with her because she did not go to check on my father. Could you go to his room to check his condition? I just felt her attitude was strange so I asked it on purpose. That sounded like a hassle to her. She became silent after some noises. Probably she left the phone. After a little while, he was there. That's enough? She shouted again, and she became silent after some noises. I was wondering what was happening to her. I just listened. Then, my brother's voice came from a distance. It seemed he just woke up. Why are you so loud? It's Taylor. She called me late at night. What a nuisance. What did she say? She checked if Dad was in the room. I see. Um, be leave him outside again. Yeah, it's all for us. We need him to be gone sooner. When I heard their conversations, I turned on the speaker on my cell phone and put it on the table. Hence they carry him. I picked Noah's cell phone and pushed the recording button in it. Like Aaron and Noah were also listening to their conversations with puzzled looks on their faces. That's near so cunning. Girl, I just saying. I never imagined that you're going to use his, uh, his insurance payout uh, for our debts. 
It's the only way. Otherwise, we'll never return them. He's just a hindrance and brainless person. Haha, and see? Taylor completely believes that Dad wonders for dementia. I can't believe it. I was shocked by every single word coming from their mouths. I cried tears in my sorrow. I did not expect that my father did not have dementia and did not wander. I got tricked by them. So stupid she is, but she never has doubts about dad, even if something happens to him. I heard their conversations until this and hung up the phone. I was stunned by them and could not say anything. Aaron strongly told me, put yourself together. His words made me come back to reality, and I thought I had to protect my father. I called the police with my cell phone, and I was questioned by them. The police went to their house, and they were arrested on the spot. Later, I was interviewed by the police several times. I turned on the recordings on Noah's cell phone. The medical certificate of my father's dementia was not found. He officially had an examination at the hospital, and it proved that he did not have dementia. It means his wander cannot be true. Even though it proved, my brother and his wife made excuses for their offense as they just did it on a whim because of my father's dementia. For the crime of attempted murder, they were given a prison sentence. After I discussed it with my father, we decided to sell my parents' house, and we changed all our contact information and moved to a new house so that we could no longer meet my brother and his wife. I asked my father why he had never told me about such a terrible experience. He just said that he did not want to bother me. He did not say anything more than this. My father was always kind. If he was verbally abused by my brother, my father was always kind. If he was verbally abused by my brother, he would not be the kind of person who raised his voice. After my mother passed away, he did not exist as a person. He might have wanted to die as soon as he could, but I can only guess. However, my father did not tell me anything. Listeners, I'm sorry for the trouble my father said to us while Amnair and I were unpacking the stuff at the new house. Dad, I'm just happy you are here. I'll never let you get into such trouble again. Aaron also said with a smile. My father smiled back. 